three o'clock and we can start, I hope. I see that there are many of you here. So let me introduce myself. I am Indra Seppo. I am from Estonia. Estonia is a small country in the Nordic Europe, Northern Europe. And I have one question for you. Uh, you cannot answer actually, but do you know what is the most spoken language in the world? Yeah, English. Almost, as that, almost. It is bad English, and bad English will be the official language of our course today. So I happen to speak a very specific dialect of bad English. This is called very bad English. Now, if you do not get something what I am saying, then don't worry, it is not, not about you, it's, in, it's the problem is in me. <laughs> you can always, you know, ask, ask, ask me to repeat stuff and, and, and so on. So what I expect you today, I expect you to have R and R studio installed. And what we are going to do today is it might be, if you are already interested in R, it might be a little bit too basic for you, but, but we are going to go through the very basics of R. Later courses, which we are going to give you, later seminars, they go on to more specific, specific subjects. But what I want to do today is to give you the very, very specifics of R. Now, for this, and I am not going to waste your time much, we will, I don't even know how long it will take today, not more than two hours for sure. So I will stop at one point, maybe one and one hour and, and three quarters, maybe, maybe, maybe up to two hours, but, uh, but I will not take you more than two hours of your time. Now I have put this, I have put this link to, to, to the materials into the chat. You, the materials cover actually pretty much everything what I'm going to talk here. I might go, sometimes I might go a little bit, little bit away from the materials, but, but, but in general, it, it covers, it covers everything. Let me see, give me a second. Uh, now, the, the, the thing is that I don't have the materials myself right now. I forgot to take my, I forgot to take my, my, well, don't worry, give me a second. I will pause the recording for a second and I'll be back in, 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 in 30, 30 seconds. With recording. So I'm going to open the R studio now. Uh, oh, by the way, okay, a little bit about my background. So I have been working with R for, for 20 years now. I am working as a programmer pretty much. I'm working as data scientist, but my background is actually in economics. So do you know what, uh, who are the economists? Economists are people who really, really love numbers, but do not have enough personal charisma to become accountants. So I, I became an economist, but my, my uh, somehow by now I, I would, I would, I would uh, describe myself as a data scientist because I'm mostly working with data. I'm mostly working with R. I'm working with R every day. I'm also teaching R. I'm teaching R in in the main Estonian universities, and and uh, I'm pretty proud that my courses are usually some of the most popular courses in in the faculties. So I think you are in in good hands. Now. A little bit about our language. Actually, in my materials, there is a little bit more about the history of our language and why it might be better or worse than than uh, than the other languages. Of course, the main competitor for R nowadays is Python, and I very much, I very much recommend you to learn Python as well. I know many of you are students. Python is kind of a universal scientific language of the day today. And, but but don't worry, but R is, uh, is better in statistical analysis. So all kinds of statistical analysis, they are usually available in R. You can, you can do it uh, out of the box. You can use R for them. In Python, you sometimes have to, <coughs> have to program these routines or program the stuff yourself. And the other thing is that, the other thing is that Everything that you are going to learn today is, is straight, is, is, is usable in Python as well, because Python's data analysis capabilities, they are very much copied from R. So how are you doing? Am I talking too fast, maybe? Is my accent acceptable? Yeah, yeah, yeah we understand. Okay, so I don't know if, 
yes means means that I'm talking too fast or or not. But... No, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you, fine. Yeah. Okay. How many of us are there, by the way? I forty-five. Yeah. Forty-five. Good. Good. Forty-five. So R is actually R was first published in or first made its appearance. I think it was nineteen ninety-one. I have the number in my materials. But but it is it is a open source implementation of a language called S, and S was made in 1976. So R is quite an old language, and it shows sometimes. R can be a little bit uh, little bit frustrating at times. It is not very consistent, you know. In some cases you use one thing, in some cases you use in the similar situation you use a different thing a little bit. And it can be, it, it is said to have a, a steep learning curve. But today we are going together, we are going to get over this the steepest part of the learning curve. And after this, this is pure fun and love. Do you know there is actually a song about R? Let me try to play it to you. I think when I play this and then I put this uh, on YouTube, they will take, they will take the, uh, the the video down because of some copyright issues, but I will still do it. So, okay, give me four, two, one. This. Love is in the all. Do you feel that love is in the air? It is, it is, love is in the air. And then and, 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 and soon you will have soon you will have some butterflies flying in your stomach because you will also be loving R. I love R. Now let me share my screen. Let me try to share my screen with you. Uh, now I am going to share this. So what I want you to do now, okay, about R again, I'm sorry, I'm, and don't, don't uh, look at the screen right now, this is one of my work projects I'm doing right now, I'm writing a report, I'm writing a report in R. If you look at, by the way, if you look at my materials, then the materials are also made entirely in R Studio. They are made completely in R Studio. Uh, so R can be also used for publishing books or whatever you, whatever you want. You see here, is it's, uh, it's a little bit in Estonian, but I write the text, then I write the R code, and then I, I create, I create these kind of reports like you, like you, like you, like you see here, with text and, and visualizations and everything. But so the R, the beginning is considered to be a little bit hard, and, and even when you use R, then you will see that that some of the things are really frustrating. Now, believe me, I had a lot of hair. I had long hair before I started to, to use R. Why I am giving this course to you right now is that you don't have to use your hair while working with R. I'm trying to give you all the basics and all the, all the this kind of uh, tricks and tips using R. Not only this lesson, but I am I'm going to, I have some free time now. I am going because I have automatized all my work at my workplace. So they kind of don't need any me anymore. So I'm going to, I have some free time in July and in August, and I'm planning to give you a couple of more of these kind of seminars. Today is the first one, maybe the hardest one, because today you will not yet see the benefits of R. You will see, but I need to build up the building blocks. I need to give you the building box blocks so that we can build on top of this the amazing uh, things that R can do. Now, what I want you to do is in R Studio, I want you to create a project, a new project. Always when you work with R Studio. By the way, just a, a side comment R Studio is the user interface of R, it is made by one company called Revolutions Analytics, and this company is actually owned by Microsoft. 
But our studio is also open source, just like our. It is free to use for, for whatever you do. You do commercial work, you do homework, you do your, your, your scientific work. You can use our studio. It is free. It is developing very quickly. It is an amazing user interface. So, but also every time you use our studio, then what you want to do, and believe me, you want to do, I see a lot of um, people who start with ours that they are not using projects, but create a new project for every project that you do. So file new project. Please create it with me. Or open your R studio now and select file new project. After this, it will ask you, it will ask you, give me a second, now, now, now click, click new directory, new directory, and again, new project. So file, new project, new directory, new project. And after this, it will ask you the project name or the directory name. Let's 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 put the name as intro to R or whatever else you want to put. I put intro to R as a project name now. And then create project. File, new project, new directory, new project, then write the directory name for it or project name for it and, and create new project. And you should see the picture like I have right now. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you to see. Give me a second that, so that you can. You do see my art studio. Yes, I'm, I'm pretty certain that you do. Now, what it did actually, what it did now, it created a new directory, and you can see for me it is home documented intro to R. For you, it is a little bit different, this, 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 uh, this path to the directory. It created a new directory into your file system, and it now it by default it reads all the files from this directory, and by default it saves all the files to this directory. Uh, it saves all the files to this directory. Uh, now, and now let's create our new, our first R script. So R is a scripting-based language. When, when you, if you are, if you are more kind of um, familiar with Excel or something like this, where you do everything, you know, selecting, selecting the command and so, so, so on, then R is a different, uh, and R will be a little bit, it will, it will feel a little different at first. How can I, by the way, how can I in Zoom? Can I create? Can I create uh, can I create a poll in Zoom or not? Does anybody know? I would like to know a little bit about your background. Let me see if I okay, poll. <laughs> yeah, great <coughs> poll. Now let's see what happens now. Great poll. Next. So, uh, so I'm going to ask you. Uh, I have not used any programming languages before. You don't see your screen now. Yes, I'm sorry. Give me, give me, give me, give me a second. I'm trying to. Create the poll here. Mm. It will take me. It will take. It will take a minute. Are you uh, creating a call on the chat? Uh, no, I'm, I'm creating a poll. I'm creating a poll. I have not used it before. I'm sorry. So it will take. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. <laughs> So, 
uh, I created the poll. Do you see the poll now? Uh, no, no. Um, you don't now. I launch the poll. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, yeah. So please, please answer answer the poll so that I I would know what is your background. Have you used any programming languages before? Not used at all. Used a bit. Or you uh, are pretty com confident in in programming languages. The second question is bullshit. Sorry. What the second question is not clear. Sorry about the second question. It just uh, it just came there. I don't know. I I didn't I didn't remove it. Sorry about this. Well. Love is in the Okay. Okay, so I see that that half of you have used a little bit of programming languages. 40% of you have not used any at all, and, they, and, and three of you, so 8%, have, are, pretty, are pretty good in, in some pro, at least some programming languages. So I'm trying, so for those who have some, some knowledge of programming languages already, uh, it might be a little slow what I'm going to do, but my aim is to give it so that somebody who has never scripted before, never at all, that, 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 that those people can can uh, can give by or can can ah my English that they that they that they can be you know with me that, that that they can that they can learn something from here. Going to share my screen again. So, R is a scripting language or programming language actually. But don't be worried about this. Don't worry about this at all. By the end of by the end of these two hours, you will be able to do some basic R yourself. Now, in R, please open file, new file, R script. Five, new file, R script. And this will create you this untitled script here. Da, 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 da. So, uh, do you all have the R script open? Now let's save it. So, click Ctrl S or the saving equal e saving icon, icon here and save it as I don't know first seminar. First seminar, it will automatically add dot R to it. So, R script files are the end is dot R. File, new file, our script, and then just save it. Click on the save icon or, or control S and, and you, can, you, can, you can save it. And now let's try, let's try, let's do our first things in R. So for example, write three plus two, and you see nothing happens. Three plus two, nothing happens. Okay, now now it's actually a problem. Now I'm I'm giving it to you like like you would do it in parallel to me, but then you cannot see me. Well, I, let's try. Let's let's try how it goes. Now, do, am I recording this or not? By the way, can anybody? You're recording. Recording is going on. It is showing that it's recording. Good. Then I didn't forgot to put it put it put it back on. So three plus two. And now if you select it, if you select it with your mouse, not mouse, mouse, not mouth, mouse, then click run. Do you see this run icon here? You select this three plus two and click run. Then what it does? It sends this three plus two from the top of here, from the R script down to the console, to the console window. And it says that it is five. Yeah. It is five. No, 
Kasper, uh, you, you asked that, uh, do you need to put spaces between this? No, you can also write three plus, plus two, or you can write three plus, and then as many spaces as you want, and two, and, and you, this will be exactly the same. So one, it will still give you five. It will still give you five. Can you imagine? Three plus two is, is five. So R is white space agnostic. You can put white spaces as much as you want or as little as you want. You can put any space to anywhere. It doesn't care. No. The other functions, uh, we, will, we, will, we will see about functions. So there are some, some places where you do not... You, well, you cannot put the spaces, but but between the you know, but in but in most of the places you can put the spaces before. But I will show you later where you cannot put any 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 spaces. Now let's try something else. Let's try what would be five minus four. But now do not select it and do not click run, but but click control enter. Control enter and it is one. Five minus four is one. So let me try again. Four divided by seven. Control enter. Control enter on your clip on your on your on your on your clipboard. Clipboard. This is it clipboard? Well, whatever. It, not clipboard. It is keyboard. Keyboard. Yes. Control enter on your keyboard, and it shows that four divided by seven is zero point fifty seven. So this is how you run our code. You write something. For example, three times five and control enter, always control enter. Because then it sends it to actual R, the R runs in this console, and then it, then it uh, completes this, this thing. So what else? So if you want to take something to a power of something, then for example, three to the power of two, there are two ways. One is like this, three, sorry, three, what's the word? And three to the power of two, one is this, but if you do cannot find this thingy, then don't 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 quit on me yet. You can also get the same result if you put two stars. So three to the power of two is nine. Can you imagine you do not need a calculator anymore? Whenever you need to calculate something, you just take out your R, your laptop. Open our studio and you can calculate everything. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Now, when we know how to do some basic arithmetic with R and how to use our studio. So for our studio, everything, you write something, you write the command, our command, and then control enter. And then it, it, it shows, shows down here what is the, what is the answer. Now, let's look at the next topic. By the way, well, first, if you want to write any comments into the code, if you want to write any comments, then this is done with hashtag. Hashtag is the comment argument. So, so assigning values to data objects. I'm going to write this, and now if, if you run this and nothing happens, it, it will not do anything because it is a comment. R is not R is not uh, considered this to be R code, it is considered to be regular text. So you can do more with R. You can, for example, assign values to data objects. For example, I'm going to create the data object A, and I'm going to give it the value of three, and control enter. And you see, You see that it, it, it sends this, if you control enter it, then it sends it to the down here, A. Okay, so this is assignment operator. Assignment operator is, is smaller than, and then minus, so that you create this kind of arrow with it. Smaller than and minus. Can you all find it from your keyboards, I hope? Because I know in some keyboards, the smaller than is somewhere hidden. Yeah. It's, it's so far, so good. Okay, so and control enter, and you see in this environment part on top right, it shows that A is free. If you want to see what A is, 
then one way to see it is to write this print, then parenthesis and A. And it shows three down, down, down there in the console. It shows A is three. Sometimes you are in a hurry. You don't have so much time. Then you just call out A. You just call out, you write A and control enter, and it shows again that A is free. Now, or let's say that B is, now this is a question from Avin, Avin Joy. I'm very sorry if I pronounce your names wrongly because you are all from different parts of no, the world. No, that's, that's right, that's right. Avin Joy. So the question was, can you use equal sign? So B is four. And the answer is, is, is longer answer. So in fact, you can a bit. You kind of can. In most of the cases, this works. But be aware, you will be considered to be absolute new by in R when you do this. In very special cases, in very special cases, this does not work. But, but actually it works. But it is considered to be very bad practice to use it. And when you use it like this, then everybody will tell you immediately, hey, this is a new by in R. She, she, she doesn't know anything. So try to use this because this works in all the cases and, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's considered to be a good practice. Now, you can also use, for example, you can say that five you can use like this, five is B. You can use this as well. And now if you want to see B, then control enter and it is five. So B is five. What you can use, this, 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 these variables or what we created just, these are considered to be, these are called data objects in R. So these are called data objects. Everything in R can be a data object. They can be single values, they can be, these tables of values, this can be a picture, whatever. These are called data objects. And you see these data objects in your environment pane. Environment, you have A is three and B is five right now. You can use these data objects just like their value. So for example, four plus B and control enter, and it is nine. Or, so one thing in R, one thing in R, do you notice that if I do four plus B, it gives you the answer nine. But what if I say C is, I'm assigning C a value of four plus B and control it. Am I going too quickly? I'm kind of assuming that you all have two screens, but you don't. So maybe, maybe, okay. Well, okay, so, See, you, you, you see what happens right now. Uh, it doesn't say you anything down here. It says it's, it gives you just new line. It gives you new line in the console. So this is what is called silence is blessed. If it doesn't show you, if it doesn't show you any, anything, any comments or anything at all, then everything is going fine. You will see later that it is a little bit confusing when it does something, then it doesn't show, send, say you anything. It writes the answer of four plus B, it writes it into C. It writes it into C. And now if you want to see what is in the C, then you call the C out and it is nine again. So, uh, so, mm. Mm, so uh, these data objects, they can be named by to almost anything. For example, you can name a, you can name a data object like three bears. No, let's make it three bears. But you cannot start the data object with a number. So three bears, this will not work. It says that there's something is problem. Data objects cannot have the name of data objects cannot have a, a space in it. So three bears, it doesn't understand this, but it can have it can have dot in it. This is okay. By the way, if you know no Python, then in Python this dot is not acceptable. In Python, you cannot use dot in the name of data object. 
you know you can but because in python you can't then it is it is uh, it is good practice to use only the underscore or to use just this underscore in naming naming if you want to have a couple of words here r is case sensitive so do you know what case sensitivity is it means that for example let's say number pairs is three number of pairs no yeah and i'm bear again you know I'm bear. give me a second imagine i i wanted to do a number of bear bears you know the mum, 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 mum type of bears but i'm fortunately i'm talking about bears all the time so so number of bears is four so you see these are two different variables two different data objects small o or big o it 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 it, it it matters in all. Now, I have the very first your turn. I'm going to copy it, not copy it, but if you go to the, this document that you downloaded, this document that you downloaded, uh, if you go to page number, page number, page seven. Um, I'm you are five page number six page number six at the very end of page number six there is your turn in in red can you see it yeah. uh, charlie yes i am going to tell you how to delete the variable in a second i should have told it already okay let me show it to you very very quickly so to remove a variable to remove a variable you need to use, there are two options. One is remove number of bears, control enter, and it went out, went away. And if you have less time, you don't want to write this remove, then RM, RM is the same as remove. Remove number of bears, and it is removed. Now, page seven, there is a little your turn at the end where I ask you to create a variable called, I'm going to copy paste it here as well. So your turn at page seven, it is like this. Create a variable called number of chickens and give it a value of four. Create a variable called number of dogs and assign it the value of five create a variable called number of animals and assign it a value of number of talks plus number of chickens and then remove the object number of talks. Try to do it. Try to do it. And I'm going to continue in, in, a, in a minute. Good, Casper. Give me. I need. I need a second because I need to open this. I need to open open this uh, materials for myself as well. I'm right now giving it by heart, but but I I want to see how my materials go. Does anyone have any problems with, with this? Um, one question, length, less than uh, minus C bracket, five, six, eight, ten, doesn't work. Wow. Give me a second, I didn't hear your question very well. You, you, you said length minus C, what? Um, length less than minus letter C bracket five six eight let's say nineteen or ten something like this. When we run, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's now done. 
Ja, it works now. It works now. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yes. If it but doesn't... we have to write down. We have to write down letter C. If it doesn't work, you write down letter C. It is nine. Yeah. So we will go to the is bigger than is smaller than uh, these operators later late, later later on. First. First. Okay, so I am going to do it now myself. So create a variable called number of chickens. So let me create a variable called number of chickens and give it the value of four. So number of chickens, assigning operator, this is called assignment operator and four. And always remember, control enter, control enter, then R understands it, then you send it to R. Then number of dogs is five, control enter, and now number of animals is number of chickens plus number of dogs, control enter. It doesn't say anything, but now if you look at number of animals, then it is nine. You have nine animals. You can keep track of your animals, which are amazing. And now remove number of dogs, remove number of dogs, and it's 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 gone. Can you feel the love in the air already? It it will take some time, maybe it will take some time because the best part is still ahead of us. Now, now that we know how to assign assign values to objects, then we pretty much know the basics of basics of of of, of R. Now let me go on and talk to you a little bit about data vectors. So any kind of row or a column or whatever, column or row, they can be considered a data vector. They are called data vectors in R, actually columns. Well, whatever. Let me let me let me show you what a data vector is. So let me create a vector, this with small c, then the parentheses, and then let me put into this vector three. Uh, Marcia, what kind of error do you have? Do you have this object created? When I assign a value, for example, to A, I when I when I write down print, I have error in the console. Do you do it like this? Print A. Yeah, yeah, I do. I wrote like that, but he. I have had in uh, control. Have the say here in the values in environment. No, I don't have that. You don't have it there. No. Well, this is then the problem. Is first, write a is equal to three, and then definitely control enter, so that you see that it creates the say, and it shows it in your environment. And now, when you print a, now it shows you the three. Okay, I will try. Thank you. Right, yes. I, I believe it will work. Okay. <laughs> now back to data vectors. So data vectors, for example, let me create a vector. This is like this C. Let's put into the vector. Let's put 3, 4, 5.6, and 7, and control enter again. And this is vector. It is just, uh, how to say it in English, uh, a row of a row or column of I don't know, you know this series yes data series, let it be series. So it put three, four, five point six and seven into this series, and in in R uh, everything is actually a vector. So even if you have a single if you have a single value, then this is also a vector, but with length of one. R is vector based language. Everything is a vector. We are going to use a lot of those vectors, so let me stop on them a little bit further and let me show you some, some things with vectors. Actually, it's already, again, your turn at page seven. So, uh, again, you can, you, can, you can say that A, A, 
is a vector like this, and now print A, and it shows that it has 3, 4, 1, 5.6, and 7. Now on page 7, there is your turn when I ask you to create a data object called length and assign to it a vector containing the following values 5, 6, 8, and 10. So please try to create this vector. And I'm going to and I'm going to I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. Let me create so first I'm saying that length and Well, see, it's not this problem. It's a file in the in the folder. But okay, I will continue. I will continue right now. So length is a vector. Casper, we will go to get to it. We will get to it. I hope we. I really hope we will get to it today. So in 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 during this this call. But but yes, this variable h would be a vector object. So I'm going to create a length vector and I'm going to say that it has five, six, eight, and ten inside it. And control enter again. And if I now run this length or call it out, then it shows that it has five, six, eight, and ten inside it. Just what I put inside it. Now, one of the common problems when you do this is that you you I put a big C here, and you cannot see that what this is big C. So, so always this has to be small C, this vector. To create a vector, you create a vector like this with small C and parentheses, and then values separated by commas. Values separated by commas. Always. Now, a little bit about vectors. Vectors all have to have the same data type in it. So either numbers, either texts, either dates, or whatever else data type there is, but one vector can contain only one type of values. For example, and please do it with me now, because we are going to use this vector later. I'm going to create a vector animals. Yes, it, the, in, this, in this global environment, you have this values length, and it says num. This means that it is numerical, one to four. This means that there are four values, and then the first values it shows here. So for example, yes, I mean, you are exactly right. Then it is a float. Uh, then it shows it, uh, it might show it like, like, like this. Don't, don't, don't worry about this. This, uh, let, let it, let it go. Well, you can also create integer values into vectors specifically, but but this is a minor issue not to be worried about. Well, not even issue, but but thing. So please create a vector animals like this. Let's put a cat. And now notice that I have them before between the quotation marks to tell R that it is a string variable or a textual variable. In R, we're actually calling them character type variables. Then they have to be in, inside, inside quotation marks. So cat, dog, bear, and an elephant. And please do it with me. Please do it with me. So create this vector. I'm going to give you a bit of time to do it. Vector animals, which has cat, dog, bear, and elephant inside.
Now, I will talk to you a little bit about vectors. And in all, pretty much everything is vectorized. And what does this mean that the thing is that computations are vectorized? For example, if you looked at length, contralength, it has five, six, eight, and ten inside. If we now add five to length, length plus five, then what it does is it, it, it gives us 10, 11, 13, and 15. So what it actually does, it takes this five and adds to the first element of length, it has to add to five, it's 10. To the second element of length, it adds five, it is 11. Then it adds five to eight, it is 13. And then it adds five to 10, and this is 15. The same if we would do, for example, length times, times three, consolent. Again, it would it would take it would it would take the first element of vector times three, second element of vector times three, third element of vector times three, and fourth element of vector times three. Now, if we add two vectors together, and now don't you know vectors adding together it's different in in mathematics than here. Vector is just the data series, or the data is kind of whatever. So let me add length plus and another vector. So let it be one, two, three, four. You don't need to do it with me. You just watch, watch what I'm doing right now. So what it does now, it takes this five, the first element of first vector, and adds one to it. It gets six. It takes six, the second element of first vector, and adds two to it. It gets eight. Third element plus third element is 11, and fourth element plus fourth element, it is 14. So, but there is something that is very peculiar in R. This is all logical, yes. I, 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 I believe that you, you believe me that this is logical, but there is something that is not so logical in R. Or no, well, how to think about this. So what if I add like this? What if I had a vector with four values plus vector with three values? And this is something that is called vector reuse. If you do this, then it gives you a warning message, but still it gives you an answer. First is six. So it takes five plus one is six. Second is eight. It takes six plus two and it is eight. Third is 11. It takes eight plus three and it is 11. And now where well, R looks okay, but the second vector now ended. What should I do? What should I do? Oh, let's go and add this one again to the 10. So it takes 10 plus one, it starts over with the second vector. And this is a very important thing to, to know that it kind of does this thing because this can mean that you, you screw up your analysis quite a bit if, if the vectors are not similar weight, you know. Let's, let's assume, for example, that you want to find, want to find uh, GDP per capita, and you have one line where you have GDP, one vector, and one vector where you have number of people in some country. And now you divide this GDP by number of people in the country, and you find GDP per capita. You divide first country GDP with the first country's population, you find this answer. Second country's GDP with second country's population, you find this answer. Third country's GDP with third country's population, you find this answer. But now you have fourth country and you only have the GDP and not population. So what R does, it divides this fourth country GDP with the first country's population. And this is something you never want. This is something you never want. So whenever you are seeing this kind of warning message that longer object length is not the multiple of shorter object length be very worried you are probably having a big problem now by the way if you have if the shorter object length is actually a multiple of longer object length for example if i do this length plus c one two then it doesn't even give you a warning it does just this it adds one to the first element of length, two to the second element of length, one to the third element of length, and three to the fourth element of length. And it doesn't even give you a warning that, hey, you have different, 
different the different sizes, the vectors are different sizes. So this is a peculiar thing of R, it is called vector reuse. And we are going to show it later how this can really screw up your analysis. But 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 uh, but for now, just just remember that there is something called vector reuse. Now, usually, now this is all about vectors. I'm going to open a new section called data frames. So usually, usually when you analyze data, when you are when you are dealing with data, it is not you know the single value or not this kind of data vectors, just one line of of values. You usually have a table of values, and this table of values, these are called data frames in R. And let's create our our first data frame, and then you will understand what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm saying. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take to create a data frame called my data, my data, and I'm going to assign it something called data dot frame. And inside this data frame, I'm data frame, and then the parenthesis start. I'm going to put animal and length and continent. Please do it as well. I hope you have created animal vector and length vector. Oh, sorry, animals. I created animals here. So I'm going to I'm going to so that you definitely have it. I'm going to copy paste it. Copy paste it to the chat as well. So I put it into the into the chat as well for you to see. And now and then after this, you need to create this data frame, my data. And always remember control enter after creating things. So my data and control enter. And what you have now, you have this my data data frame. If you look at it, if you call it out my data, then it shows you that cat is a length of length of five, dog is a length of length of six, then there's a bear with a length of eight, and elephant's length is ten. So this is a usual thing that you that you use data. This looks like Excel worksheet, doesn't it? So so. By the way, one thing, if you now go to the my data here, can you see it in the environment there is my data? A bit worried that I'm, I'm, I'm running. I think they do, you can check. I think they do, but I'm not completely certain. Data frames have to have vectors with same length. Let me, let me, let me try very quickly. Data. The frame A is thing one, two, three, four. B is three, one. Yes, they do. Now, if you go to, to my data in this area environment, and when you click on it, when you click on it, then you see it opens in, the, in, a, in a new pane, it opens this data in this familiar view, like an Excel sheet or something. So there's one thing you cannot edit it. You cannot edit the data here, but you can see it. You can search for, for specific values. You can, you can uh, when you click here, then it, it arranges them by, 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 uh, by uh, length and so on. Or by the animal name, it arranges. So it opens a new pane to get back to your to your original pane, just click on it and you are back on this first seminar.r. You can also see a little bit about this my data when you click on this, this blue triangle here in front of it. Then it says that this data frame my data contains vectors animal and length. Animal is character type, it has cat, dog, and bear inside it. Length is numerical type, five, six, eight, and ten inside it. So here, so you can take a quick look of what, what data frames do you have. Now, data frame is the most used. 
the most used uh, data type in R. As you can imagine, usually you have this kind of data tables, tables of data. This is data frame in R. And I'm going to show you how to, how to, how to uh, work with data frames. Dollar has a meaning, yes. So I'm going to show you this in a second, Kasper. So, but first, please do it with me so that we, so that everything will work, uh, so that it will not disturb us. Remove animal, control enter, remove length, control enter. Okay, Navi, you are doing great, but what do you want to do? How do I go? Where do you want to go today? How do you go back? You just click on on this on this first seminar R, if you mean this. Okay, but all please remove animal and remove length. Sorry, how do I go back to the scripts? I am having the table animal and length on my scripting um, interface. So I want to go back to this arrow scripting. Script. So you are on top of this my data now? Yes, I'm on my data. Okay, go to seminar. That, uh, okay, okay. So thank there, you. Just click on it. Uh, Did you manage? Yes, it's done. Thank you. Okay. So please remove animal and length. Notice that inside my data, they are still available. Yes, view has to start with capital V. View has to start. If you view something, you can also you can either click on my data or you can say like view my data, but it has to be used capital V. And if you view it, then it shows 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 it shows it here. If you want to do it from the from the from the from the command line. Now, to access a single variable or or column from a data frame. R is what I want to tell you. R is freeware, but you, you, you need a lot of dollars to use it. So to access a single variable in a data frame, in a data base or data source, you, you will need a dollar. Please find a dollar mark from your, from your computer. So this goes like this. My data, dollar animal, and it gives you that it is cat, dog, bear, elephant. My data, data dollar length, and it gives you five, six, eight, ten. So this is how you how you access a variable in the data frame. You can have, have a lot of data sources open open parallelly. Here in the global environment, you can have a lot of data frames. But if you want to access specific variable inside a data frame, this and variable name or actually database name dollar variable name database name dollar variable name. This is how you how you access them. Now, what if we don't want to access the whole vector and we want to access just one particular element of that particular vector? Let's say animal. I want to access dog from animal from the data frame. What do I do then? If you want to access a specific, a specific, specific, a specific number element, yeah. Element, yes, element, exactly. Then inside these squared brackets, you write the number of the element. So my data animal one is cat. My data animal two is dog. My data animal three is bear. My data, all but first animals are dog, bear, and elephant. Or my data dollar, my data dollar, Animal, if you want to have, for example, second and third one, then what you need to give it, you need to give it a vector of the positions. So a vector, let me remind you, started with C. So C, one, two. It gives you the first and second element of... of, of so the numbering in R uh, starts from one and not uh, zero. Yes, yes, this is also because I... Yes, this is what okay. I forgot to tell you. Actually, I plan to, to talk about this a little later in the, in the class, in the seminar. But, but what is important in R and what is different from most of the programming languages? 
most of the programming languages start enumeration by zero. So the first element is element number zero. In R, the first element is element number one. And this is different from, from Python as well. And as many data scientists use Python and R parallelly, then this can, 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 uh, can uh, you know, screw up your work or your, your mind has always needs to calculate that in Python, the first element is element number zero. In R, the first element is element number one. Very good, very uh, good. Master. Uh, Master, uh, I would like to ask you about the positive and uh, negative numbers. Like we have positive one and negative one. Is there any uh, difference uh, for the R for selecting the columns by these numbers? Uh, sorry, I was I was looking at the. So okay, let me. I, I'll get back to your question and actually can you question it can you say it again but first I answer Kasper's question so my data exactly the same way you go inside it like you go inside of vector but now it, you need to have two numbers the first is row numbers the second is column number if you want to have the first row element two then it's like this it's five if you want to have only the first row and all the elements all the all the columns then one comma and nothing, and it gives you the first row cat with a length of five. If you want to have only the second column, then like this, and, and it gives you the second column. Now, Ahmed said it correctly that when I used this my data animal minus one, then it gives everything else, everything else but the first, first value. Now, who, somebody asked a question and I didn't quite catch it because I'm, I was concentrating on the chat. Did you get your answer yeah, now? Or? Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Andrew, uh, I would like to ask about the, uh, the sign of minus in positive, like uh, first means raw and second uh, number means it's a column, but what about the negative and positive signs of uh, what it does mean? The negative. If you use yeah, if you use minus two, minus one, what then it means? It means that it it uh, it, uh, it excludes the second row. It shows you all the all the animals, but not the second one. So if I want to say all the animals, but the second and the third one, then I would say it like this. Now it shows the first animal and false animal. It's uh, uh, it's opposite to Python. For example, in Python minus one starts from the last element. It's a good comment. I am not very good in Python, so I don't. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but very good because very many people are using Python and R together. Then, if you have these kind of comments, uh, then then please please share them. Yeah, and Python's like that. When you type in minus one, the elements start from the end of the data. For example, in our table, it's like, uh, for example, the last thing, let me just check the data, elephant. If we type in uh, minus one, the result will start from uh, elephant. If we type in minus two, it we'll, we'll, uh, shows bear. If we type minus three, we'll start dog and so on. So, at the bio, you ask the bracket uh, parenthesis type changed from the regular brackets to, to square brackets. So, the square brackets are for getting inside the data frame, getting inside the data object. The regular brackets, they are used with function names, with functions. We will see the functions in a second. Give, give, give us a second and we will, we will go to the regular parenthesis again. But if you want to go inside the data object, then you use then you use this, this, uh, this uh, square uh, Yes. So now, if you want to add a variable into a data frame, then what you would do is one way to add a variable into the data frame is like this. I'm going to create a new variable with in data frame my data. So I'm writing my data dollar with. And I'm assigning a value to it. 
I'm assigning something to it. And I'm going to assign that, let's say it is, let's say it is, it is three, three, one, one. Please add it as well, because we are going to use this, this, this in the future. No. No. Um, you see, so this is one way to add add some variables into data frame. You say that my data dollar data frame dollar then new name of what you are going to add and then assigning operator and this has to have the same number of of values than the data frame already had the data frame is perfectly rectangular all the vectors that are there have to have the same length you cannot have one vector taller than another vector they always have to have the same length these vectors but usually, of course, when you add, when you do something with your data, data source, you do not add values by hand, you know, that, hey, I got now, I got new values, let's put it by hand in, in, inside here. What you usually do is you do some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, arithmetic operations with this data or something like this. For example, let me create my data taller, let's say, length squared. I'm creating, I'm creating a new variable length squared in a data frame, my data. And now I'm assigning something to it. And what I'm assigning is my data dollar length to the power of two continental. So I am taking this, taking this length variable inside my data to the power of two, and I get this length squared variable in my data. Ebenezer, you have not created my data. Please, uh, you did you forgot to 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 do the console enter part probably. So I'm going to copy and paste this again here. I'm going to copy and paste this code here, Ebenezer. Now, control enter, copy it to your code and then control enter after each line. Control enter actually executes the line. And then to have the same data as everybody else, then add this width. Ah. Add this width to it as well. And console enter again. And then it should show you that this my data object is, is available. This is a very common mistake just to forget to write this console enter after after a line of code. This is a very common thing that you, it has to come into your hand that every time you write a line of code, you console enter it to execute the code actually. So now we should have this length squared. Now, another way to access variables in the data set actually, the dollar sign says that which variable inside the my data data frame you are referring to of a So you have my data data frame dollar with it shows that show me with variable inside my data data frame. Rank you want tilde. We will get to tilde. Oh, you mean this here? This is not tilde. This is some, I don't even know how it is called. But you can, instead of this, you can write, you can write these two, two stars. And then it is also taking it to the square. Now, 
Now, if you want to, if you want to select some subset of this data set, you only want to select first or second row or well, first two rows, then you can actually access it like this. My data now showing me to the data frame with the SQL trackets. And now the name of the variable you want to get, for example, animal. Now it creates you a data frame that only has one variable in this data frame with only animal variable in this. It is a data frame with only one vector. If you want multiple vectors, then you need to use again vector. So my data and square brackets and now vector of names, for example, animal length and this Variable names have to be inside, they have to be quoted. And if you want to create the new, you see, like always in R, if you do not write the result of this command into a new data object, then it is going to show it to you in the console. You have always two options, either to write a result into a new data object or to 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 uh, oh well it's already we have already done this for more than an hour do you need a five minutes break so do you need a five minutes break what do you think we have done it for more than an hour already i plan to continue until five o'clock Okay, let's do a five five minutes break, and and I'm going to get myself a coffee, and I I will be back. This class will be forty five more minutes. Perfect. Yeah. Thank so you. Yes, yes, we will have a break. Thank. You. In five minutes, so when the clock hits twenty, then we continue. Uh, okay. But but please, you can continue asking me questions. I am I am going to take myself new cafe, but I will continue with the lecture in five minutes. So in, in 16, 40, in 60, 20, my times. But I don't.
So I'm, I am back, I am back. So what do you have some questions here? Yes, Charlie, you need to have them in the, in the quotation marks. Why do we have them in the quotation marks? Because otherwise it would think that this is, that this is a R data object. Now it doesn't think it is an R data object. Now it thinks it's a it's a it's a it's a string. It's a string. I found another beer. I'm in my office actually. So, so uh, just if you're interested, I am working for Estonian e residency. This is if you ever want to create a company in Estonia, in the European Union, then you can apply for e residency electronic residency you will get you will get uh, you will get a special card this costs something like 160 euros and then you can with this card you can create a, you can create a company in Estonia without leaving your computer in 15 minutes and then then you can you can start doing business in European Union if you if you ever want to now I believe that you are not the real target group for this but if you if you if you Want, if you have some questions about this, then you can always turn into to, into let me, let me let me put you a link here. You will, can turn turn to me, but take a look at look at this. But I'm not really doing doing any advertising today. I am teaching art today. It's amazing to. To, to do some R again. Do you feel that love is in the R already? So, where were I? Uh, I will continue now. Mm. I will continue now. So now notice that it, it shows you this my data animal length, it shows you this answer in the console. If you want to write in, in, into a new data frame, into a new data object, then you would write something like animal length is well whatever you want to call this data object assign this to it and console enter and now you have a new data object called animal length which only has these two variables inside it now at page 11 there is a small your turn your turn at page 11 and i'm going to give you a bit of time to to do this because it's it will be it will be a little bit uh, you will you will mess with it a little bit you will make mistakes you will fix these mistakes and and i'm going to give you something like four or five minutes for this try to do this page 11 your turn Right. <laughs> 
No, it's no product. The product is one times the other, not some, but uh, two times three. Uh, I mean, so. Okay, so let me let me let me let me show you the first one. So I'm going to create a new variable called volume in the data set in the data set my data. So first my data dollar volume. Oveka it is at page eleven in the in the in the in the materials. I put that's a very First, in this, I, I can copy the materials again if you didn't get them. Do you have them, Oveka? Okay, good. Page 11. So, my data, Tollav, what did I want to create? Volume. And, and Ishren, maybe you can find the link, link of the materials. Uh, so like this, and it's and I'm going to assign something to it. So I'm going to create a volume inside my data, and assigning it, I'm saying that it has to be my data dollar length times my data dollar width and consonantal. No, what? Sorry, my data dollar width. So now my data has a new variable called volume inside it. Vitupana, the dollar sign it just is just to refer to it is just to refer. So again, I'm going to go over the my data sign again. So you have a data frame called my data. This my data has a number of variables in it, like animal length, width, length, squared, volume. If you want to access a single variable inside the data frame. If you want to point to this variable in the data frame, then you need this dollar sign. So variable width inside my data data set is my data dollar width. This is how you get to this variable. Dollar sign doesn't do anything else. It just is a referral that width inside my data, this is, you access it like this, my data dollar width. Vitupana or anybody else, was this now, was this clear enough? By the way, can you write from which countries you are to this, to this chat? I just would like to see. Okay, while, while I'm, while I'm, Vitupana, while, while I'm repeating it, then, then, Please, others write this. Wow, Sudan, Argentina, Germany, Italy, Nigeria, India, Myanmar, I've been to Myanmar, Honduras, Philippines, I've been to Philippines, a wonderful country, South Africa, India, Germany, Lithuania, USA, been to USA as well, Bhutan, Ethiopia, Jordan, Nigeria, 
Turkey. So again, my data is a data frame, Kenya. And Tollal just says that inside this data frame, there is a width variable. So you just say that inside my data, a width variable, Kana, Malawi, India. My data dollar width just says that this variable inside this data set. Casper, uh, can you can you show me your my data? What does your my data show? Does your my data have this width, width and and uh, length? Give me, for example, give me the result of this names, my data. Then it has to work. Then it cannot say replacement has zero rows. Yes, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, Little Palna. Yes, this is okay. This shows that there are three, there are four values. Four values there. The first value is three, three, one, one. And what does this one mean in the, in the beginning? What does this mean? I am going to show you what does this mean. So, if you, for example, I'm going to create, and don't do it with me, I'm going to show it to you just. I'm going to create a very long, very long list of numbers or very long, long, long uh, vector. So my long, long vector is, and I'm going to use a shortcut here, and this is a vector, so it's C, and I'm going to say that it would be, let's say, from five until 444 continental. So this colon creates values that are, uh, well, let me just show it to you, my long vector. It creates this uh, consequent values. And now what does this 1, 14, 27, 40 show? Here? It shows that the 5 is the first element of this vector. 18 is the 14th element of this vector. 31 is the 27th element of this vector. So if it only say, shows one here, then it's the first element of the vector. Now, okay, but but let me let let me continue with this my data here. Now again, this dollar just shows that inside this my data vector volume. Show me vector, show me volume inside my data. It doesn't do anything. It just it just is how we, the address of this vector is my data data set volume variable. Now, the second part was create a new data frame called animal volume. So animal volume is containing only two columns from the original data frame, animal and volume. It is my data and inside this data set, I'm going to select the only animal and volume. Continental. And now I have animal volume, a new data set that has only animal and volume in it. So, but now let's think a bit, what did we do? What did we do? What did we do right now? We, we found length times width, the product of length and width, and we said that this is volume. But this is not volume. In the best case scenario, it is the, if we have rectangular animals, it is the area of an animal. It is not volume of an animal. Volume would be, you know, three-dimensional thing. So what if we want to delete one, 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 one uh, column or one variable inside the data frame. Then what you would do intuitively, you would do something like remove 
my data dollar volume and it would not work it doesn't go this way it does not go this way what you need to do is like this my data dollar volume and assign it n u l l big letters null and now my data doesn't have this volume variable anymore so if you want to remove one variable from a data set you assign null to it but big letters n u l l let's go to next topic let's go to next topic and the next topic is commands do anybody has any questions now or functions it's nice to be able to think beer openly now when i'm giving university lectures they they do not let me drink beer on on here so well, they let it, but it's considered to be a bad practice. So I have to do it behind the behind the behind the camera. Uh, Palna. So what do we created here? We created a volume variable inside my data, and we said that this should be length times width. So length in my data times width in my data. Uh, can anybody else is there anybody else do you hear Are the I, hear you. I, I hear you i hear you very yes, well yes so uh, i will launch for the Oh, I, I sent the direct message to somebody. Uh, sorry. Are boy? Sima knows that is let's let's let me so basic functions you should remember at one point, but usually you are you are searching from the internet the functions. Now, what did I want to tell you? Okay, that, that you created this volume that is length times width, but then you figured out that volume is not computed like length times width, and then you then I removed this volume variable. I removed it by assigning it null. <clears throat> you can hear me now. Good. Let's continue. Let's continue with our seminar and we continue with commands or functions in R. In animal volume, I, I just removed it. You see, I wrote null into this my data dot volume and then volume was removed. Yes, you can overwrite, Charlie, you can overwrite. What did I do here? I selected from my data, I selected only variables animal and volume and created a new data set animal volume and now this animal volume only has two variables animal and volume yes charlie you can overwrite a variable and it and it uh, no you cannot undo casper i think yes you you asked at one point that can you undo something no you have to run the code again or remove the variable you cannot undo a command that is set to R. So what you usually do when you how is it how is it in in a, this kind of safe language to say when you fuck over something? What would you say? Screw something. Or, screw is also something that is not not uh, work safe for. Mess up, good Ahmed. When you mess something up in all then usually this is the point of this code, writing this code, that you run the code from the first line until the moment where you messed up and you, you will get to the same result or you'll get the same thing back. So writing in R, why is this important that you write it down every second? Why is this, is this actually, actually better than, than your Excel way to do something or SPSS way or, or starter way? 
is that this is called reproducible research, reproducible reporting. So you can always go back to your code and look exactly what you do, what you did. If you do something in Excel or, or something you do, you know, you create some things you don't remember. In two months, you will not remember what the F did you do. But here you do remember, you, you can go back and, and go through the code. And usually when, let's say, when some data source changes, then you just change the data source and, and you run, and you run, uh, you just change the data, data in the first line and run the code again and your all your results and graphs and everything will be will be will be new ones considering the new data so it is very very beneficial in this way but now i'm continuing we, this is this is a reusable research this is kind of what everybody I, at the bio, I will I will show you it in the next lecture or whenever or somebody else will show. So I am so about this meeting meeting today. Today, give me a second. I'm an, I am an a bit. Uh, today we have Isven here. Isven, can you say hi? Yeah, hello. So Isven is organizing this, and thank you, Isven, for organizing this. Yeah. And and uh, she has actually collected together a couple of couple of us. Uh, so, yeah. So I was wondering that if next section can also be taken by you. Uh, yes, I. I will ask a little later whether you want to do it tomorrow at the same time or next week at the same time. Uh, tomorrow is fine with me. If anybody has problem, we can do it tomorrow as well. Uh, tomorrow is fine. I think uh, we, we, we we have some eight vacations. We should utilize the stands after uh, classes will start uh, in different countries. Uh, so yeah, everybody is like writing tomorrow is fine. So we can have tomorrow at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very good time. Tomorrow at the same time, I think it it, it will be. Yeah. I will continue, but I, but I have not finished yet. I have not finished yet. But it's just a, as a comment, is when do you want to comment yourself, or should I comment it? So there are multiple this kind of lectors like me who will give some of these lectures or some of these seminars. So, yeah, like. Um, I can share. Um, actually, this series is devised to con uh, to cover all the aspects of R. So here we are. There are a group of seven mentors who volunteered to teach us. So we are very, very thankful to them because uh, they are spending time for us. And uh, so really, thank you so much, Seppo. And today the lecture was very amazing. Like I really loved attending your lecture and you are superb in whatever like how you teach so so uh, so the lecture series is divided in a way that every uh, mentor teaches what they are expert in so seppo will be taking initial lectures uh, according to his time availability and he suggested that he is available till august 21st and after that another mentor will take depending on the lecture schedule and depending on the uh, and on the mentor expertise, I will share the entire lecture schedule. What are the different uh, topics we are planning to cover with you uh, within this week? So yeah, if you have any questions and if you want any other uh, like topic to include, you can let me know. And if anybody else who think that they can uh, mentor a session, they are expert in a particular topic, they are most welcome to come and teach us and you can also lead a topic. Thank you. Oh, nice. Ahmed, you asked, uh, so don't thank me yet. I am going to, I am, I'm continuing for the next 15 minutes. I plan to show you the functions a little bit. Kasper, you know some Estonian. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, there was a question in my day-to-day -day job, do I build models? And thanks, things like, like this, yes, I do build some models. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing 
So EDA, what is EDA? Uh, I do it. Uh, you mean what is EDA? <laughs> Uh, I will I will put I will try to put uh, exploratory data analysis. Yes, I do exploratory data analysis. I do much reporting. I do uh, I do all visualizations. I'm my, in my day to day job. I have done. Yeah, I will put the recordings up. Yes, but I don't. I have two terabytes of data. This that you can download. I don't know if, uh, if this will be enough or how much it will be done, but I think two terabytes should be enough. Mm. Yeah, then uh, what I do in my day-to-day -day job, well, maybe at one point I will I will show you what I do, so, because then I will, you, will, you will see what is possible with R. But for now, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, functions. Maybe you should create the YouTube channel, I don't know. So a little bit about functions. Uh, ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Keep with me, and then then we can have. I, I will have some time to talk or chat with you, and maybe maybe show you what I do for a work. But after the after I have after I have finished the the where I want to where I want to get right now. So we have used some functions already. <laughs> we have used some functions already. For example, this data frame and 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 C and. And these are all functions. So functions in R are like are like function name, and then the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we put what is called arguments, arguments. And let me let me show you something. Let me show you a simple function. So the one simple function is function to find averages or function to find mean. So this is, for example, mean of my data length is 7.25 so now you know you can you can you if you have some animals in your household you can put them all into a data frame and then you can find an average length of your animals now so the, so this function mean after the function name always comes the parenthesis and then inside here goes the arguments if you want to know what kind of arguments what kind of inputs uh, very uh, function can have then what you then you write question mark and function name question mark and function name and consonant and if you write it then do you see now that in the in this in this uh, right 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 down this panel comes yeah, this help comes this help help uh, view of this mean function and this help uh, help you this is always the same for every function in r so i will i will put some time into explaining it you see it says that it it's a mean function that takes as input the arguments as inputs takes x trim narm and, and some other arguments but it doesn't matter right now it ignores these three points then it explains the 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 argument so x has to be an r object currently there are methods for numeric logical vectors date date time time interval objects blah 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 so you can find average from from numeric vectors you can find average from dates you can find, find average for times then there is something called trim but note that trim is set to be zero so x is not set to be anything but trim is set to be zero so x it requires you have to give it the x argument, but you don't have to give anything for trim, and if you don't give anything to trim, then it is zero. And not available rm rm, it is either true or false. It can be at it, and it will deal deal with it will say how to deal with values that are not available, values that are that are you know missing values. We will get to this in a second. But first, let me show you what trim does. Trim, it's not actually important, important, but trim removes highest and lowest values and then finds the, the average. So for example, I find mean my data. Mean my data length, comma, trim is 0 0.25, 
on Solentra and it is seven. So Trim removes 25% of the highest and 25% of the lowest values and finds a mean of, of the other values. Do not concentrate on this too much. I only show this Trim, I have never used it in practice, so maybe once or twice. But, but just to show you how to put some, some uh, arguments into our... Now, about this NRM, it is a very important, it is very important, um, important uh, uh, argument that you use a lot. I am going to create now, you don't have to create it with me, just take a look with this. I'm going to create now a, a vector called missing, and I'm going to assign it these values. For example, three, four, five, and not available. NA, missing value is like written like this in our NA continent. So the missing shows like this, three, four, five, and not available. Now, what do you think is the average of three, four, five, and a value that we do not know? By taking the mean of the, the rest of the data. No. You, you see, the problem we have... I want to, I want to replace null values by mean R by C0. No, but you cannot. Not available is not the same as zero. Maybe it is 100. Maybe it is minus 100. We do not know. So R, when you take a mean of this missing, then it tells it it's not available. Because... We do not know one value, and R is very, very strict in this respect. When Excel, I don't know what the current Excel does, but current Excel automatically, I think it is discards the values that are not available. Oh. R does not discard them. R says that, hey, you have one value that I do not know. Maybe it is 1,000. How can I know what yeah. is the average of these values? Yeah. So it, it gives you missing. It gives you not the value. But if you yeah. still want to get the average of these values, then you mm -hmm. have not available remove. NRM is true, true with big letters, control enter, and then it finds that it is four. The average between three, four, and five is four. So excluding the not available. So this not available remove, well, remove, it is available in very many functions, and you, you use it very, very regularly, this kind of stuff. Now, Another function that we will use a lot is read.csv. So this function reads a comma separated values file. Now let's take a look quickly at the, at the parameters of read.csv, question mark and read.csv. You don't have to open it yourself. You can also look at what I, what I, what I show it to you because I just want to show you the, the structure of the help file. The structure of the help file, again, it shows actually read table, read CSV, read CSV2, read the limb. It shows you four or five different functions. These are all what is what is called like comfort, com comfort functions, not comfort functions, how to say it in English. Well, it doesn't matter. These are all based on the same function, but they have different default values. So for trim, you see, when I looked at the, at the mean, uh, mean uh, this, then it says that trim is zero. So by default, trim is set to zero. NRM is false. So by default, NRM is false. Only if you change it, then it becomes true. But you don't have to say anything, then it is false. Now in read CSV, th this is the same. It shows it. It it shows you that 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 there are. <laughs> functions with different default values. And now you see that there are a lot of arguments. Read CSV needs a file argument. It needs to know which file to read. But the other arguments here are already pre-filled. And here it shows there are a lot of arguments that you can change. What is a separator? What values to consider to be not available values? How many lines to skip from the top? strip white should it remove the leading and leading uh, white space and leading and, and white space and this kind of stuff encoding and so on so it has a lot of different different parameters now let's read in let's read in one file 
and let me let now I'm going to paste it to you in a moment, but I'm going to write it here first. Read dot csv and this will be a long i'm going to paste it to you the address i'm using my university address and it is a little bit long uh is set for gdp estimate csv this is not interesting file at all sorry it is not reading is my university again no it, it read it i'm going to paste it to to you here as well so it what it what it does uh, i will not talk about the data set it is not important what data set it is uh, it's just I, I use it as a as an example data you see it reads this file from the internet and it like in r always it shows you the result of what it read so it shows you a data frame what it read in but if you want to do anything else with this data frame, you have to write it into a data object, into a data object. So to write it into a data object, I'm going to create the data object GDP and give it, assign it the value of this. Does anybody else get the several? You don't need to set working directory, Ahmed, because we, we have, we are, we are by, def by default, we are in my working in the, you know, we created a project, Ahmed. Did you also create the project? So by default, this project is your working directory. It created a, uh, it created a, it created a, a directory in your, in your, in, in a directory into your computer, and this is the default working directory. Uh, okay, I know what you're missing. Uh, 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 hey, uh, did I write it? I'll uh, 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 enjoy. It is not easy, uh, but it is a poor. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Yeah. Ishven, I think you might have. Please copy and paste this, uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. So I have four minutes. I want to show you. I'm I'm now going to run really quickly because I'm wanting to give you one your turn uh, after after this after after I finish. First, I'm going to show you a couple of so how to get an overview of a data set. You you I you read in the data set. How to get an overview of it. One of the commands you need to know is summary. Summary GDP, and it shows you the overview of every variable in here. So year, it's minimum is 2003, maximum is 2015, it's mean is 2009. And then there is something like date, which is character type. But latest estimate, first estimate, quarter, whatever, these kind of uh, variables are there. If you want to see the top lines of the data set, then head GDP console enter. It shows you that these are the first lines of the data set. If you first six lines, if you want to see the last six lines of the data set, then tail GDP gives you the last six lines of the data set. Don't worry that I'm running right now. We are going through this tomorrow as well. We are going to go through this uh, as well. Uh, but so if you want to know how many values are in the data set, how many rows and how many li li rows and how many columns, then there are two. Yes, Ritu Pavna, I'm going to show it to you tomorrow how to how to open an Excel file or, or maybe another set day, but you can open an Excel file. So you see in this GDP, in this environment, it shows 48 observations, so 48 lines of five variables, so five rows. You can also call dim GDP console enter, and it shows that it is 48 lines and five columns. If you want to see the file again, then view. GDP, view with big V and GDP opens it in, you see, in this, in this, in this new, 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 new tab. Now, I'm going to end this, our first lecture now, but I'm going to leave you. Actually, I'm going to stay here for another 15, 20 minutes to talk with you. I'm going to 
stop the, the, the recording. So I'm going to stay here. And there is a your, your turn variable. Your turn, not the, your turn variable, I'm an idiot. Your turn again at page 14. It starts at page 14 and it goes on and it goes on to page 15. And I believe this will take you a good 15, 20 minutes to complete it. I will be here this time by the way, but I know that I promised that it will take only two hours, this first lecture, so I will not mm. make you listen to it, do it, but, but I have a question. Oh, uh, now you are, you can do some real stuff in R, that by now, with this two hours into R, you can do real thing, and, and this is page 14 until page 15, and we will continue from here, we will continue tomorrow at the same time. So at three o'clock tomorrow, I will again be here. I will create, a, I will create a Zoom meeting and then I will send it to you. I will ask Sven, actually Sven, thank you again for organizing this, send it to you. But for now, the official part of the first lecture is finished.